Welcome back into CBS Sports HQ. It is Mock Draft Monday. Time to take a look at Ryan Wilson's latest mock draft. He is not straying from Kayvon Thibodeau going at number one overall. We'll see what uh, Brady and Danny have to say about that. But somebody who is jumping up, Matt Corral going fourth overall to the Texans. We have not seen the quarterback go that high since September. So is that a good spot for him? I'm Amanda Garrett. Let's welcome back in Danny Cannell, Brady Quinn, along with the guy behind the mock drafts there, Ryan Wilson. So let's start with the Lions. Two picks in the first round. Ryan, you're not straying from Kayvon Thibodeau going first overall, but you also have the Lions selecting Nevada quarterback Carson Strong with the 27th overall pick. So, Brady, how do you feel about that one getting thrown into the mix as well? Well, the interesting thing to me, Ryan, is like if you want to go after Carson Strong or any quarterback in this draft, you have the number one overall pick. So you're going to secure that first, in my opinion, before you start going for an edge rusher, which we talked about at length. You know, they've invested into maybe not as much as a first overall pick in the draft, but I'm not so sure either that he's worthy of that first overall pick. I mean, they lost again this past weekend. He didn't have much of an impact. And in fact, it seemed like Utah was okay running right at him at times, uh, which again, whatever you want to make of, of the film and how it looked, he didn't have as, as big of an impact in the game as I thought he would have. So bottom line is, I think when you're looking at the Lions and what they need, maybe that you feel like they don't need a quarterback or that would be a luxury at this point. But I look at it and say, if they're going to get one, they're going to do it with that first overall pick, not the 27th or in the trade scenario you have here. Yeah, that's a fair complaint, Brady, and I won't even push back that hard on it. You mentioned last week how uh, the Lions, can, they've drafted a lot of edge rushers, defensive linemen, and that hasn't magically turned around uh, their series of unfortunate events. And that's true. And Thibodeau is basically a layup. It's the Chase Young pick. It's a no-brainer. It's the Joe Thomas pick. You just take it and don't have to think about it. But that doesn't necessarily make your team better, especially a team that hasn't won a football game yet. And I think if you're the Lions, this is what you're hoping to do win a game or two and get out of that first spot and perhaps even have a chance to trade down a couple spots and then get a quarterback. Because I think we talk every week and we can all agree that there's no quarterback worthy of the number one overall pick as we sit here. So maybe trade down if you can. And here's the thing with Carson Strong. like He is my QB1 if he's healthy. He ain't healthy, and I've talked to teams that are really concerned about the knee, and I've talked to teams that have him out of the first round because of the knee, and, and that's troubling, and that's too bad because he's played really well in his college career. Uh, so you're going to take a risk if you take him in the bottom of the first round. But I think you're right. I think if you're the Lions and you want a quarterback, you have to go get him, and at the end of the day, you're probably going to end up having to overdraft him. And one last thing, I've just updated my – my uh, top 100, number one and number two, Amanda and Danny, because it's their birthday. I just found out. Didn't want to hurt their feelings. Happy birthday, guys. <laughs> Didn't want to let you down. Thank you. I love it. Can I say something on Carson Strong? Because what I, I, I think I, I'm glad that your scouts are concerned about his knee because when I see somebody, there is a very serious lack of nobility. He's on a lot of CBS Sports Networks, so I've seen him play a lot on some of those Friday night games, which he was this past weekend. I... I see somebody who has limitations. I know he's pretty athletic. He actually like averaged it or had probably 14 double doubles as a basketball player. So he's a pretty good athlete. But in a league that is rapidly changing with players, they want to be able to, to run the football a little bit, at least keep defenses honest with a sprinkle of RPO or a quarterback who's a little bit more mobile. Carson Strong is not that. All right, let's go to another quarterback. Texans selecting almost quarterback Matt Corral with the fourth overall pick. Now, Ryan has not had a quarterback go this high since September, September 13th to be exact. Danny, what do you think about Matt Corral here to the Texans at four? Well, the first thing I thought was there's no scenario, I think, where I see a quarterback taken this high. Now, the Texans clearly at a desperate place, especially with the John Watson uh, situation where nobody knows what's going to happen there, where it looks like they're going to be looking for a franchise quarterback. Unfortunately, I don't think one exists in this draft class that at least should go in the top 15. So, yeah, maybe if they're desperate. And I've done this before. And you look at the whole entirety of the class and you're like, well, okay, there's nobody that great. But then teams get def desperate and they overdraft. But if they take Matt Corral with the fourth pick overall, I think they're setting themselves up for a rough few years if they're banking on building around him as their franchise quarterback. And that's, it sounds like a knock against Matt Corral. But I think Brady Quinn, I think said a couple weeks ago, he looks he's like a less... He's not quite Baker Mayfield. I think that was kind of it. And I think that's a pretty accurate assessment. I don't like he runs the football a lot. His, his stats are OK in a system where he should be putting up big stats. I don't know if the top tier arm strength is there. I just don't. I'm not impressed with many of these quarterbacks in this class. I just wouldn't have any of them in the top 15. But we've seen this trend. 
Yeah, that's right, Danny. The, the question is going to become how high do these guys get pushed up because teams are desperate, coaches and GMs are trying to save their jobs. And we see it every draft cycle. I actually like Matt Corral. It sounds like a little more than what you're describing. He's my QB1 now because he's healthy. We've talked about uh, Carson Strong just here. And there are a lot of things athletically that he does that you want NFL quarterbacks to do. That said, he's only 6'1". He takes a ton of hits, and those things will eventually add up. And also, and we talk about this every week, fit matters. If Mac Jones goes to the Lions, he's probably not very good. He went to the Patriots. It worked out for him. Zach Wilson would probably would have loved to go, go to New England. So it matters. So if Matt Corral ends up going to the Texans, that probably won't be great for his near-term health or his near-term success. And you just hope they can build around him and, and find ways to, to get back to the, the winning football they used to play, which seems like it was decades ago now. And the only other issue, and we talk about this as well, when you take a, a quarterback that high at number four, for example, you're worried about teams behind you. And you have teams like the Falcons, perhaps Washington. I don't know if they like Taylor Heineke now. He's played really well in recent weeks. Uh, and other teams behind them that are looking for quarterbacks, and you have to be concerned about that as well. Uh, we saw what the Bears did with Mr. Trubisky. I think Matt Corral's better than Mr. Trubisky coming out. But at the end of the day, Mr. Nissi's a back backup for the Bills, so that, that should give you some indication that he probably shouldn't have gone in round one. Well, and number two overall. I remember, I mean, the, the Bears did trade up to take him there, but you know, the reality is this: if you're looking at the Houston Texans, they're going to have to have a quarterback who's going to be somewhat mobile. Uh, but we don't know how things are going to look once free agency is done. I mean, that, that's really the truth there. And I think Danny touched on it with the Deshaun Watson situation. We assume he's going to be somewhere else besides the Houston Texans. And then if that's the case, where does he end up going? Because that's going to fill a quarterback need for another team. Uh, whether or not he can play there will be a different you know, story. But you've got the potential of guys like Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, maybe not being with their current team. So you're going to see that flood first. And then you're going to start to see that pecking order of what's left and what teams feel good about some of these quarterbacks um, that are up there in this year's draft. And the guy I like the best, Kenny Pickett. And Ryan, thank you so much for listening because you did it. You did it with this week's mock draft. You got him going 18 <laughs> to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I love it. He doesn't have to go anywhere. He could be a Yinzer with the rest of the guys there and stay in Pittsburgh and ball out and, re and replace Ben Roethlisberger. So tell me a little more about that. Yeah, you, you twisted my arm, Brady. I didn't want to hear you yell and scream at me. So I said, you know what? I'll take him from Cleveland, even though Baker didn't have a great week. But – to Baker's credit, he has one arm and one leg he's worked with. So he's actually playing pretty well for someone who is so limited physically. So I took him from Cleveland last week, which uh, I got texts from people from the uh, Browns fans who were yelling and screaming about that. Put him on the Steelers roster. And this even comes a day after Roethlisberger probably played his best game of the year against that Chargers defense. But Roethlisberger, Roethlisberger is still 39 years old. Maybe he tries to come back. He shouldn't come back, and you have to move on. Uh, there are other questions. I mean, the offensive line needs to get better. I'm sure Najee Harris would love to have an offensive line that would uh, uh, run block much better than they have been this year for him. But you have young pieces in place. That defense is really good when it's healthy. We saw what they look at when they're not healthy. And Kenny Pickett can come to a program similar to what the uh, Mac Jones and the Patriots have in that everything, there's not a lot to rebuilding to do. You have the quarterback in place going forward, and Pickett's 24 years old, which I don't have any issue with. He's a lot of experience. He's made a ton of progress from last year to this year. I'm not convinced he's a first-round pick, but in the course of, in, the, in the, this conversation we're having about quarterbacks in this draft class, he deserves to be in the first-round conversation. So I think if he goes mid to late first round, a slam dunk for a Steelers team that needs a quarterback. Yeah, I totally agree. It kind of feels like Kyle Trask last year to Tampa Bay. They were looking for the successor for Tom Brady. You know, has an unbelievable senior year. He's older. He's a player that's matured and kind of flourishes in that one year last year with Gators. That to me is what Kenny Pickett is this year. And I think Pickett's upside might be even a little bit uh, higher than what you saw from Kyle Trask last year. So I love the idea. Brady put it out there last week and the more I started thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, this makes a ton of sense. Brady said it last week too. You can share, you, can, you don't have to move like your locker room. You can just like have a kid move your boxes about 100 <laughs> yards from your practice facility to theirs. You already are very familiar. He can still take out his offensive lineman that he had in college with the NIL deal at the hotel where he takes him to dinner every week. He can keep everything the same. And oh, by the way, he's a great kid, great leadership tangibles. And I think his game kind of he's not quite as big as Ben Roethlisberger, but his game is a little bit like a big Ben. So I think it's a very smooth transition if the Steelers wanted to go that way. Well, and you mentioned that last week. You he said they're very similar. He reminds me of Ben Roethlisberger coming from Miami of Ohio. But to Danny's point, he's not as tall, may not as big, but he's got some of the ability to escape and the wiggle. And all he does is chuck lasers down the field. Here's what I'd love for them to do, too. <laughs> Keep picket there. And then go draft probably third, fourth round Jordan Allison, his wide receiver, had four tutties this past week. Get him on the roster, too, so you keep some of that continuity because he would be an awesome complement to what they already have in Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool and Pat Fryermuth. So I'm telling you, just 
Keep those Pitt Panther boys <laughs> there, man. Don't let them go anywhere else. All right. We'll see if the Steelers will listen to you because Ryan has now listened to you a couple times, especially with this next one here. So at the end of every single email we have going into this segment, Brady has said, Jahan Dotson, first round. Where is he? Jahan Dotson, where is he? He has now made it into the first round. Ryan has him going 25th overall to the Chiefs. Do you like that? Ryan, don't do it to the rest of the NFL. Do not put Jahan Dotson with Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill Ooh. in an Andy Reid offense. That is an absolute nightmare for anyone to deal with. Look, I love this kid. Now, he's a sub six foot wide receiver at probably 185 pounds, but he is dynamic. And I don't care if he can't get many yards after contact because not many people are able to touch him, at least at the college football level. And I think he'll translate well when he's probably the third option to what they would have in this scenario for the Kansas City Chiefs. But he could be a returner for you. He can run the football in those jet sweeps, fly sweeps. And this dude in space is hard to tackle. There hasn't been a more clutch receiver this year, in my opinion. When you look at when Penn State needed to play, who they go to, everyone in the stadium knows it, and they still can't stop this young man. Just go back to this past week. I know they ended up losing the game to Michigan, but it was Jahan Dotson down the stretch, the two-point conversion, that helped Penn State climb back into this one. So I love the pick. I love the fact you got him in the first round. I think he's going to run a 40-yard dash, too, that cements him as being one of those guys that's looked at, especially when you turn on the tape. Yeah, when you talk to people at Penn State and you compare Jahan Dawson to K.J. Hamler, who came out a few years ago, uh, all of them go Jahan Dawson is better than K.J. Hamler. Hamler was a second-round pick, plays for the Broncos. And I think your point about him being undersized, it may not even matter, Brady. We see Rondell Moore and Elijah Moore both balling out uh, this year, one for the Cardinals, one for the Jets. They are undersized. They are also bowling balls. That's not quite uh, Jahan Dotson's game, but he doesn't have to be a bowling ball in that Chiefs offense should he end up going there. Also, by the way, you, may, might, you might say, well, do the Chiefs need all those playmakers? Only Tyreek Hill and Nicole Hartman are wide receivers under contract after this year. Now, you, you can find guys to play pitch and catch with, with uh, Patrick Mahomes, but it doesn't hurt to have someone to go along with Hill and Hartman uh, by, by the likes of uh, excuse me, Jahan Dotson, given how well he's played this year all right let's talk about another wide receiver this one who has been in the first round pretty much every week Ohio State's Chris Olave last week Ryan had him going to the Lions at 27 the week prior to that to the Browns at 17 this week he has them going to the Patriots at 26 overall Brady what do you think about that well I love it I mean he just passed uh, David Boston for all-time career receiving touchdowns at Ohio State tells you a little bit about his productivity but Talk to Brian Harlan, their wide receiver coach there, who played in the NFL, is one of the best in the business to do it. He raves about him. Every little aspect of his game, in particular, though, is route running. And that's something that I think that combined with his speed is something that's missing in this New England Patriots offense. And I'm sure Mac Jones would love to have. He's as sure-handed as they come. I don't think he has a drop in his career in the red zone, hence the reason why he's now the, the career leader in touchdown receptions at Ohio State. But it's his route running. It's his speed. And even the little things, like when he blocks downfield, like I know we see Garrett Wilson, some of his highlights, or ja Jackson Smith and Jigba, the other guy who's a part of that, uh, that threesome of wide receivers. But go back and watch some of those big plays. It's Chris Olave blocking for his teammates down the field. I just think he'd be a perfect fit in Josh McDaniel's system, and especially for what that team needs. And I don't think, look, the Patriots have a hard time drafting wide receivers. They're not going to miss on this one. Yeah, it feels like a layup, and it feels like a few years ago they took Nikhil Harry at the bottom of the first round, and there was a lot of projection with what Harry might become in the NFL, and he frankly hasn't become it. Olave, you know exactly what you have based on how polished he is, and Brady just explained all the reasons why and all the things he's done at Ohio State. And I imagine as we get through Matt Jones' career, as we go from year one to year two to year three, you're going to start opening up the offense just like they did with Tom Brady. Right now it's defense and run game and let Mac make a few throws. They're going to have to start doing more and more of Mac putting the game on his shoulders with his arm, and you might as well give him uh, the talent he had at Alabama as opposed to the talent he currently has at the Patriots. It sounds silly to say that the, the wide receivers at Alabama were much better than his current lot, although he's doing quite well with those guys. And I think Olave, if he's there, feels like a pretty clear-cut case of a guy you'll take if you're looking for a wide receiver as the Patriots. Guys, if you Google David Ajabo's name, the first thing you're going to see is that he is flying up draft boards. And sure enough, he has made it now into Ryan Wilson's first round. He has him going to the Titans with the 31st overall pick. Danny, do you like him here? 
I absolutely do. And I think you might even see him go a little bit higher. So much of the talk was around Aiden Hutchinson has been spectacular. But I think once you pop on that tape, you're like, okay, this isn't the only guy balling out for this Michigan defense. And the way he's been playing lately with 10 sacks on the year, he's got 10 tackles for loss as well. I think this weekend's a big opportunity for him because there are going to be a bunch of scouts there to watch that matchup with Ohio State. And if he has a big game, I would not be surprised at all if he continues to just keep going up and up and up these draft boards. Yeah, he's a junior, so we'll see what happens. And I hesitate sometimes to put juniors on these early mock drafts because I've had actually teams yell at me for doing that because you're encouraging kids who should come out, that may come out that maybe don't need to. But Ojabo's a special guy, and I've talked to teams that really like the way he's played. And you're sort of right, Dan. You have to do the math. How much of this is playing opposite Hutchinson, and how much of this is just Ojabu doing exactly what we – seen him do with their eyes. So the 10 sacks stick out uh, at you. He's big, he's strong, he's fast, he's twitchy. Uh, he's kind of raw, but you would expect that for a junior who hasn't played a ton of football. And I think he's going to get better. And, and to your point, Danny, that Michigan defense, I don't know if we talk enough about it. Hutchinson, Ajabo, they have Ross, the, uh, the linebacker, who's going to get drafted. They have Daxon Hill, the safety, who could be a first-round pick. I've had him going in the first round the last few weeks. So there's a, there's a lot to like about this Michigan defense, and it starts with Hutch and Ajabo. We'll see if we like him as much after this week when they play Ohio State. That could be a different story yeah. coming, off, coming off that matchup. So. We will see. We'll get your in-person reaction because you will be there for that game. Uh, Brady Quinn and Danny Cannell, Ryan Wilson, thank you. We'll take a look at his mock draft next Monday. Until then, make sure to download and follow the Pick 6 podcast for everything in the NFL.